Good morning, everyone. I am Reen Wilcoxon, owner of Embroidery Garden, and thanks for joining me today for my June demo, the Trifold Wallet Hack. I know a lot of you have been um, eagerly awaiting this, so just come in, chime in, tell me where you're from, what you're up to today. Hi, DV uh, from Washington State. Great. I'm in Indiana. It's a little bit gloomy out today. Looks like it might rain, but I don't think it's going to. <laughs> We've had some really warm weather. Um, make sure that um, if you can see me and hear me, give me a thumbs up so that I um, you know, know that you're out there. I'm going to be posting a link here. Let me get this put in there. Um, this is a link to a page that has all of the products that I'm going to talk about. So you can open this up in another window and, you know, kind of watch as I'm, you know, showing some of the things and talking about some of the things that I'm going to be using. Hi, Lori. Hi, Cheryl. Thanks for joining me. So I've been doing a monthly demo. I did one all of last year, and I've done one all of this year so far, and I plan on continuing to do this because everyone seems to be enjoying it. Um, one thing that we're going to do today is I'm going to have a live giveaway at the end of the demo for a $20 gift card to embroideryguard.com, and all you have to do is type in hashtag garden, just like this. Only type it in one time and you will be entered into the live drawing at the end of the demo. So hashtag garden, get that in. Hi, Sally, good to see you. Hi, Laura, Lori, Laura, oh, there's a couple of Lori's here. Thanks for joining me. So I'm gonna talk about a couple of things before we get started so that uh, other people can roll on in. So again, first thing, hashtag garden to get into the drawing for the $20 gift card to embroideryguard.com, which will be live at the end of the demo. So some of you may be following me on Facebook and be in my in the Facebook group and know that I am doing a giveaway that I have partnered with Embroider Shop. That's Zandra Shaw and her sister Mila. They have just come out with a brand new fabric line. They've got 300 different, just beautiful fabrics. I'm going to be showing you some of those. And um, we're doing a giveaway for a one-yard piece of your choice on Embroidery Garden's Facebook page. So if you go to the page, there is a link, um, or sorry, there's a post talking about the giveaway. And answer the question, and you will be entered into the drawing for the one-yard piece of Embroider Shop fabric on Embroidery Garden's Facebook page. And if you are in my Facebook group, you also get another chance because there's going to be another one yard uh, fabric giveaway in my group. A winner will be picked from there. So remember to do that because the drawing is going to be on the 28th. Okay, I see Gia and Florence and Elizabeth and Murtis is here. Thanks for joining me. Hi, Linda. Um, so this fabric that I'm if you've been following me again, you have seen me post some projects recently where I've used some of the fabric, and I'm going to show you some of it that I've gotten in now. Okay, so like I said, it is from Zandra Shaw and her sister Mila. They are from Embroider Shop, and these are some of the fabrics that I've gotten in. Um, they're just beautiful, like these florals here. Um, these are what they call their watercolor backgrounds very pretty, um, can mix and match with a lot of the fabrics. I was going to pair these two together with something. Um, here's a very pretty print that I did a notebook cover out of. Love this. Um, let's see, I believe I did, oh, I did a notebook cover out of these two. This is another one of the watercolor uh, prints. Really, really beautiful colors. I did a bag out of this one. I'm going to show you that again here in just a minute. I use these two for my trifold wallet hack. It's a really big, beautiful, um, bold floral and a dot that matches. I use this um, Sewing Notions fabric on a notebook cover. And the trifold wall, uh, wallet that I'm doing today, I actually used these two fabrics on, and you'll be seeing that in just a second. I, I must have got, I think, about 20 of their fabrics in. Like I said, they are really, really pretty. Here's some more. These are some more of the background colors. So remember, there's a giveaway 
for a one yard um, piece of your choice, you can go to their website. Uh, let's see, it's fabricfunshop.com and um, look at the fabrics and pick one in case you win. These two coordinate. I really love these. Um, I really like this uh, sunflower print. Very pretty. Here's a little ladybug coordinating print. Not sure what I'm going to do with those, but I just love that. And then this one is a real pretty summertime um, print, I think. It has this pretty bird on it. It's a beautiful flowers. So all of their fabrics are really pretty. They're 100% cotton. And, um, you know, they are made here in the U.S. and they ship from the U.S., so get in on both of those giveaways because it's a double giveaway. And remember, um, the giveaway today for the $20 gift card to embroiderygarden.com, just type in hashtag garden. Okay, so a few other things going on. Uh, let's see, Thursday, I'm going to actually be going to Wisconsin to Sally Tomatoes Warehouse where we're going to do a comment sold. I don't know if you're not familiar with Comment Sold. It's basically um, having a big sale through Facebook. So what we've done is we've took some of my uh, designs, some of my In the Hoop designs, and I've stitched them out in some of Sally Tomato's beautiful cork and faux leather uh, prints. And I used, you know, their beautiful zippers and hardware. Um, so that's going to be happening on Thursday. I believe it's at noon central time. So there'll be more information coming about that. So be on the lookout for that because they're going to have kids and all kinds of sales and everything. It's going to be kind of exciting. Um, on the 7th, July 7th, I am hosting a free virtual dime event. This is the She Shed Embroidery Escape event. You can sign up for that on, if you go to embroiderygarden.com, it's one of the big banners uh, at the top of the page. Just click on it. It'll take you right to the registration page. It's a 90 minute free um, event where you're going to learn a lot of uh, tips and things about embroidery and you get to shop all their specials and watch the video again for 48 hours. I see a lot more people rolling in. Hi, Tammy. Hi, Janet, Barbara, Marsha. Thanks for joining me. On, let's see, the 11th, Caroline is doing another one of her wrapped handled uh, clothesline bowls. And in this class, she's going to show you how you start the bowl. Um, she's going to make the base. We're going to start building the sides. She's going to show you how to add fabric in. She's going to show you how to make handles and how to wrap them with the clothesline and give you various ways of finishing it off. So this is on the 11th at 6 p.m., and you can sign up for that at embroiderygarden.com. Just click on classes, uh, virtual classes, and you'll see it there. Hi, Sharon, Sheila, Robin. Thanks for joining me. Um, on the 12th, uh, July is going to be a busy, busy month for me. On the 12th, I'm going to take over Sewing Machine Plus uh, .com's Facebook page, and I'm going to be doing one of my In the Hoop designs. I'm going to take you uh, through how to do one of the In the Hoop designs. It's going to be a lot of fun. Um, this is a series that they've started. I think Joanne Banco is doing it um, maybe the week before I am, but uh, just, you know, go to their page, follow them, and you'll uh, get all the details. I know Joanne's got a cute project. I've seen that, and I think I'm going to be doing... Maybe my design your own hipster bag. So that's going to be on the 12th on Sewing Machines, uh, Sewing Machine Plus.com's Facebook page. And then on July 21st and 22nd, there is an in person event in Arizona with Mall Queens. And I'm going to be virtual through that. And so I'm going to be teaching for like about three to four hours on July 21st and the 22nd. There are other instructors there. It's a huge event that they're having uh, down in Mesa. You can go to mullqueens.com and find out more information and sign up for that. Um, Stitching with Sue, you know, if you follow me on Facebook, if you follow Embroidery Gardens Facebook page, um, this is where I post all of this information. And of course, in my newsletter, you can sign up form of the newsletter by going to embroiderygarden.com. And in the bottom right is a link to sign up for the newsletter. 
Sharon, you're going to go to SMP this morning. Great. Love their stores. Uh, Gloria, no, you did not miss the notebook uh, cover hack. I'm going to get into that uh, just a minute. I'm looking over my notes here. So I did put a link earlier um, in the chat for um, it's a link to a page that I set up that list everything that I'm going to talk about today, links to products. Um, I do that for every one of my demos so that you have everything there that you need at your fingertips. You can open that link up, you know, in another window and, you know, kind of follow along if you want. All right. So what I'm going to be doing, uh, let me just make sure I got everything in July. There are a couple of other little things happening in July that, I can't give you details about there are going to be some surprises, but um, just make sure you follow Embroidery Garden uh, Facebook page and you'll be notified of everything. Okay, so what am I going to do today? I'm going to show you how to hack my trifold wallet. So this is the one that I posted, that I posted in the advertising and stuff. And the hack that I did to it was I added the tabs to add an adjustable strap. And I added a pocket to the back side. This is like the back of the wallet here. It's just a little pocket. And let's look at the inside. The inside is the same. For all the hacks that I did, I did like three of them so far. The file does not change, okay? The file is the same. So there are no changes made to the file, nothing new to download. Everything that I've done is something that I'm adding in and I'm going to show you how I added it in. And more importantly, I'm going to show you how, how I determined to like, how did I know where to place this pocket so that when the wallet was folded, it ended up exactly where it needed to be. Those are some of the things that I'm going to be going over. So some of the other hacks that I showed recently, this is my notebook cover, very popular design. Um, this is one of those that is out of um, Embroider Shop's fabric. And what I did to this, you know, the page marker really isn't that much of a hack because I think we went over this in uh, some of the virtual classes that I did. But I will go over again how to make a page marker. And on the front cover, this is the front, on the inside of the front cover, I made a little pocket. I added a pocket on, uh, you know, you could drop a credit card down in there, some money down in there, whatever you want so that you have everything with you. So this hack will come, you know, I'm not sure if I'll do it as a monthly demo, but again, watch a Burger Guards Facebook page and you'll know when I'm doing this one. One of the other hacks that I did on one of my designs, okay, so it's the zipper bag. This is from the zipper bag set. I believe this one is the eight by eight size, but you can do this hack to any of the designs. Um, in the zipper bag set, and you can really do this with any of my bag designs when I show you this. Um, so what I did on this one, and this is that dragonfly fabric that I showed you just a couple of minutes ago. The hat that I did on this one was I added, uh, let me see if you can see this, a little double pocket inside. And I put it on the, basically the back side of the pocket. So it's I'm sorry, the little bag here, so that when you have it, uh, you're carrying it, um, you know, can easily reach in. It's a little pocket you can put your phone in, anything you want to separate from the rest of the contents of the bag. I added a tab, <coughs> excuse me, the tab. Um, it, the instructions tell you how to add a tab. I did make an adjustable strap for this one, and, you know, I added just a little um, uh, key fob thing on that can be taken off etc. So these other two hacks, the notebook and the zipper bag, will come a little bit later. So let me see who else has come in. Um, Jay's here. Good morning, Jay. All right. So let me grab a couple of things over here to get ready for this. And I'm going to move to my table so that I can start showing you a little bit close up of uh, what I'm going to be doing. Okay, so remember, hashtag garden. Let me just, if I can keep that up there, maybe I'll put it up here. And let me kind of arrange some stuff here that I'm going to be showing you. So again, as I said, the hacks, nothing changes in the file. The file stays the same. And again, for this trifold wallet, I wanted to add tabs 
so I could add a strap to it. And I wanted the pocket on the back. So to do these hacks, I mean, this is just something that, you know, I thought one day, well, I, I shouldn't say that actually. The idea for the pocket came from a friend of mine, um, Connie and Margie, who came up with the idea to add a pocket um, onto the back side. This pocket on the back side, you know, a phone could slip down in there, um, you know, anything that you wanted to put on there. So when you decide you want to do a hack and you figure out what you want to do, you really need to have made one first, okay? Because how am I going to know exactly where this pocket needs to be? How am I going to know exactly where the tabs need to be? So I need to, um, I see someone just said that uh, it's not coming up on Facebook. When I first started, something said, uh, something came up and said it was having a problem um, going to Facebook. So I'm not sure why it's doing that. Uh, I'll have to put an announcement up that it is on um, YouTube. Okay, so this, <coughs> excuse me, is another wallet that I previously made. This one happens to be made out of cork. Um, you don't have to make it out of cork, but this one is one that was made out of cork. So, but you need one. You need one made per the instructions because this is how I determined where the tabs needed to be for the strap and where the pocket on the other side needed to be. So when the wallet is finished, the bottom folds up basically to this middle pocket, this middle credit card pocket. There are actually three pockets here. The bottom folds up to about the middle pocket. Then the top folds down. It doesn't fold down over the zipper like that. It folds down above the zipper. That's how it was designed to close. And then it closes. And then on the each edge, you can see it overlaps about an inch on each edge. So it's important to have one already made. Now, how did I determine where to put the pocket? You have to measure. Um, there was, you know, there's no other way. You have to have one completed and measure. So I wanted to put the pocket here on the back side. So I took a ruler. The ruler is my best friend when I'm doing things like this. And you don't want your pocket, the bottom edge of the pocket, to be down here near this fold, okay? Because you don't want it to get folded under any. So when I looked at this, I thought three inches would be a good height to make a pocket. So it, here's my three, and here's the top of the ruler. So that looks like a good size to me. Um, that, so that looks like about a good size for me. So I determined how big I wanted my pocket to be, a finished three inches. <coughs> and then I need to determine where the tabs need to be. So when the wallet is folded up, it folds right above the zipper. It's folded right above the zipper. So I need it to, when this one closes, you're going to see that the tab is really located right below the zipper. One thing you got to keep in mind, too, when you're doing these hacks, you always have to think about um, bulk because whatever you add is adding more bulk to this design. So if you look here at this corner where I added the um, tab, you have to take into account um, all of the layers of bulk and we have this fabric, there's batting there. All of these pockets are folded. So there are two layers of folded pockets. There's this layer here. There's part of the zipper is in there. So you really have to um, make sure that you take into account all of the areas of bulk. Okay, so to add the um, tabs and to add the pocket, before you start, you really need to have your pocket made. And let me grab 
Let me get this one out of the way. And let me grab this. Now this demo is not on how to make the wallet, how to stitch the wallet. It's how to hack the wallet. So the wallet has actually already been stitched up until the last um, step. I'm just about ready to do the last step on the wallet. Um, and that's where I need to be. The front of the wallet, or let's call it the outside of the wallet, is a quilted piece of fabric. Got some batting here. I've got my stabilizer. So all you do for the outside of the wallet is hoop stabilizer, lay your batting down, lay your fabric down right side up, and stitch um, like a quilting file. The wallet, which is on sale right now, I'm doing the 8 by 12 but I put um, all of the wallets on sale. Because you could do this hack to any of the four wallets, but you have to, um, you know, you're going to have to make changes due to the sizes. On this one, I have a Brother Luminaire. It has a bunch of built-in beautiful um, quilting patterns, so I quilted one of those. The file does come with a stipple. You could do that. You could do free motion, whatever you want, okay? So this has all been done per the instructions beforehand. So how did I make the pocket that goes on the back side? And again, here's a little pocket here. So all the pieces on this wallet are, let's see, they were nine inches wide. That's what the instructions will tell you. So I knew my fabric piece needed to be nine inches wide. I knew I wanted it to be, um, let's see, what did I say? Three inches when finished. So I cut it nine inches wide by six and a half inches high so that when I folded it and it would be folded right sides together, I would put it under my sewing machine. This has to be machine sewn. I used a quarter inch seam and then it would be turned to the right side. So then it looks like this. This is one that I've already done. So basically it's a little tube. Um, on this one, I took a piece of double-sided interfacing, cut it just under three inches so I could just slide it through here, and then I pressed it so that it's adhered on both sides on the inside. It adds some body to it. It makes it um, a nice, firm little uh, pocket. I didn't want to add too much to it because, again, you always want to think about that bulk. So I'm gonna see if we have any questions coming through. I know some of you got here a little bit late because it, it's not coming through on Facebook. Um, I'm not sure why. That's it's just a glitch, cyberspace that happens. And um, But you can always watch this on YouTube. You can come back and watch it again. It's here. So don't uh, think that you've missed anything. Okay, so I'm looking through some other questions. Oh, Karen, don't be mad. You can watch it here on YouTube. Again, remember to um, type in hashtag garden to be entered in that uh, gift certificate giveaway. So I had my pocket made. Now, how do I know where to place it so that it, on this piece that I'm going to eventually turn over and put it right side down to stitch my wallet together, how do I know where this pocket needs to be? So how I determined that was I took my pocket that I made and I placed it. Remember, I had measured previously with my ruler, and I'm just going to take this one again so that when this is folded, the pocket was going to come right below these tabs. You can see it here right on the edge. This is the back pocket we're adding, and this is the tab. Okay, so, well, first let me do the tabs. So I determined that I wanted three, uh, three quarter inch tabs and strap on my wallet. I thought that you know, would look the nice one inch I thought was too wide, um, half inch I thought was a little bit too skinny. That's all personal choice. And the hardware that you use is personal choice. On the tabs, 
Um, on this one, I'm using D-rings. You can see I use D-rings on this one. They're a little bit bigger. And I used a swivel hook to attach the strap on both sides. So when I determined where to put the tabs, they were going to be right below the zipper. So the tab is just um, a piece of fabric. And let me show you how I make my tabs and my straps. All of my straps, I make the same. So to, to make a quarter inch, I'm sorry, a three quarter inch finished strap or tab, you start with a three inch wide strip. Of course, this one is short, it would be really long. Fold it in half, press it to get a crease. It's folded wrong sides, press it to get a crease. Then take each long edge, fold it into that crease on both sides, press it again, fold it in half, press it again. And this equals three quarters of an inch. Then you're just going to, um, let's see if you can see on this one, I just machine stitched down both long edges. So I'm doing, I do my entire strap and tabs all at one time. So I just go down each long edge, then I cut off. Um, three inches. Three inches will make these little tabs. So each one of these is three inches long. I just put the little piece of hardware through it, bring the short ends together, and I like to just machine baste across there um, because, you know, if you don't, you take the chance of it slipping, and then they're not on top of each other, it's a little bit off. I don't like that, so I make sure that they are on top of each other, based across there really quick, so that um, my tabs are ready. So when you place a tab, always remember that you have to place the, the loop end, I call this the loop end, towards the inside of the design. The cut ends go towards the outside. So the problem becomes now, how do I know where to place these? We're gonna go over that in just a second because you can imagine, how would I place each one of these? I may not have put this fabric directly in the middle of my hoop. So I can't say, oh, I'm gonna measure from this edge over so much and place my tab there because both of these may not end up being even. But first, let's get our pocket stitched on to the outside piece of our fabric. So I knew where I wanted to place this. So we're gonna pretend, we're gonna get our tabs in in just a second. Right now I have my machine set up for sewing so I can show you how to sew the pocket piece onto the outside of the wallet. Okay, so I know my tabs are gonna be placed here when the wallet is done. And I want the pocket to be placed right at the bottom edge of those. I don't want it on top of those. Um, I want it right at the bottom edge of these. I want to make sure that it's going across the hoop um, evenly. Let's just move these out of the way because we know where they're going to go. And it looks like this is lining up. This edge is lining up with the top edge of the second pocket, middle pocket. Here's the first pocket, the middle pocket, and then the last pocket. So I'm going to line this up with the top edge of that middle pocket. Okay, it's just gonna lay there. I'm going to take the outside piece and I'm gonna lay it down on top. Basically, you know, about make sure that it's covering everything like the instructions tell you. Make sure that your pocket underneath there doesn't move or anything while you're doing this. And I'm just placing it on there. That's about how it's gonna be. If you go off a little bit too high, too low, that's not gonna matter. But now you, I want to lift this up and I wanna lift up my pocket. And I'm gonna hold these two pieces together. I'm doing the exact same thing on the opposite side, being very careful not to shift or move my pocket piece. And now I'm gonna turn it over. Um, let's see, I'm gonna use a couple of, whoops, I got some clips here. And I'm gonna clip this in place so I don't move the position of it. And that's where, how I determine where that back pocket needs to go. Now I'm gonna go to the sewing machine and I'm gonna stitch it down right here. I'm gonna stitch very close to this folded edge. Let's go to the machine. I have it already set up for sewing. 
I have a foot on here that has a guide. You can, maybe you can see that little guide it's right here. And I'm gonna run this fold, keep it even with that little guide so they get a nice straight um, stitch on here. So I'm gonna wake my machine up and I'm sewing the bottom edge of the pocket down to the outside edge of the fabric. You're going to have to do this by machine, by sewing machine, because, you know, you can't do this in the hoop. All right. Let's go back to the table. And I have my pocket stitched on down here along the bottom. And that's how I know exactly where it needs to be. So I can set this piece aside because the next step is now determining exactly where to get these tabs on so that I make sure I have them you know, equal on both sides. It's not gonna look so great if you know this one is sticking out further than this one, or I don't wanna take the chance of having the tab not stick out enough and possibly hitting my hardware. So I've got to take my machine and turn it over to embroidery. So let me just go here real quickly. Take this foot off. Let me get my embroidery foot back on. Make sure that I get it on correctly. Tighten it just a smidge. I need to go into um, embroidery mode on my machine. And I'm gonna have to bring my design up. And remember, I'm, I wanna go to the very last um, step of the wallet design. Yeah, I have it brought up. Let me get my hoop on the machine because what I want to do right now is I'm going to the last step of the design, which goes around the entire wallet. Let me change the view here for one second. So this last step of the design, it goes around the wall. It's going to leave an opening here at the bottom, but it's going to go around the entire design. I need to know where the edges are gonna stitch so I know where to place um, my tabs. I'm gonna use part of the outline of the design to get placement on my tabs. So let me uh, get my machine to the very last step. And let's go back to the machine. So I'm at the very last step. Now, if you weren't doing this, you would be taking that quilted piece of fabric that you had, placing it right side down, and just stitching it, and you would be done. I need to advance through my design a little bit to get to this area where I want to add those tabs. Okay, so I'm getting kind of close. Now, right about here is where I want to add the tab. So I'm going to let my machine stitch just a few stitches. It's making a placement line. That's what I'm doing. I'm making a placement line for myself. So that's all that I need. I'm going to um, advance my machine again because I need to get to the other side over here to know where to place the other tab. So let me just advance through the design to get over there. Let me cut my thread so I don't end up having a problem. So it's gonna start coming down the right-hand side. And I'm about where I need to um, place the other tab. So let me go ahead and I'm just gonna take a few stitches and I do wanna watch this, um, uh, those pockets because I don't wanna catch those. I think I went just a smidge too far. So back up a little bit. And again, I'm giving myself a placement line and this is all that I need. I don't need to stitch all the way around. Let me cut the thread. Let me get my machine back to where it needs to be so I don't get confused.
And okay, that's where it's going to be stitching. Let's go back to the table. Um, Virginia wants to know if I lined the tabs with SF 101. Um, yes, on these I did. Sometimes I do, sometimes I don't. Um, Maureen, you can find the wallet design at embrugarn.com. Again, there is, even on uh, YouTube, below the description, there is a link to the wallet. There is a link to the um, uh, a page that I set up where I link to everything on it. Okay, so I have my little marks. You can probably, I think you can see those. Here's one right here and one right through there. So that is where the edge of the wall is gonna stitch. So now I've made myself placement marks. So I take one of the tabs. Remember it has to point, the loop end has to point towards the inside of the hoop. We grab a piece of tape and I'm gonna put the tab, remember it's gonna go right below the zipper. I'm gonna put the tab so that the cut ends Let's say they are about, and let me use a ruler just to measure here. They're going to be a half inch from my placement line that I stitched. And let me just get it in line here and get it moved up and tape it down in place. Okay, so that's how I got one of them in place. To put the other one, I know that the Loop goes towards the inside of the hoop. Here's my placement line. And I'm going to put the cut end about, let's see, here's a half inch right below the zipper. Let me tape that in place. And now I know that my um, little tabs are going to be even on both sides. And I have enough room um, to you know, avoid any problem with the hardware or anything like that. All right, so the last step. Now, another thing you could do if you wanted to was you can go back and do exactly the same thing over that I just did and use it as a tack down. So you go to that last step again, advance to um, where the tab is. You can see it and Take a few stitches, tack it down in place. Advance around here, do the same thing. Take a few stitches, let it tack down in place. <laughs> I'm not going to do that um, today, but you could do that. So then the next step would be to add our final piece to the back side. I can take these tabs off because it is actually stitched down here. And remember, I lined up that top edge with the top edge of the second pocket. So when I place this, I'm gonna do that again. I'm gonna line up this pocket piece with the second pocket, which actually it's even with the bottom of the tabs. So just make sure that that's lined up because I want my pocket to go nice and straight across. I'm going to fold that back out. I made myself a note as the top because my fabric is a little bit directional so I wanted to make sure that I, um, I got it in the correct direction that I wanted to put it in. At this point, um, you know, you can tape this down. Personally, I like to pin, and I like to pin um, at the very bottom corners and at the very top corners. Make sure that, um, you know, you're out of the way of the stitch line. And for me, this just keeps everything in place. I like to just make sure that everything is laying nice and flat. And let me get the two pins at the top and then I'm ready to stitch this together. So that was, you know, basically pretty easy. I hope you guys found it easy to do and kind of understood that. Remember, you can go back and watch this video again. So now what the design is going to do, it's going to start here at the bottom stitch around, go across, come back, leave an opening here. Nancy, I do like to pin also. I just think that it holds things um, in place better. <laughs> so I'm gonna let this start stitching. 
And if you want, um, you know, since you added the tabs, so since tabs were added, et cetera, you know, you can watch as it stitches. And when it gets near that area, um, if you find that there's too much bulk or something, you can stop your machine. You can raise the height of the foot up to get over the bulk, um, et cetera. You might want to watch it. I do like to keep an eye on um, some things. Um, one thing I want to show you is my uh, hardware chart. This is something that um, it's a free download off the embroideryguard.com. And what it is, it's basically a little chart that I came up with so that I can um, kind of audition hardware. Jay, I'm doing the 8x12 wallet. <laughs> and I can audition hardware. So let's say, let me go back to the one that doesn't have a strap on it. Okay, I determined I wanted to add a strap to this. I can take my um, hardware, and this is a printable. You can download it, print it out. I laminated it. You can probably see the shiny uh, surface on it. And then I can take um, these off. They're put on with snaps. So I take them off, and I can kind of audition them onto something. And, you know, this is a half inch. And to me, I thought that it's not quite big enough for me. I mean, I thought it was a little thin, a little skinny. So take off that quarter inch or the three quarter inch. Kind of check this how it looks. I thought that looked better. So that's how I determined that I wanted to go with the three quarter uh, inch wide strap. And then you can, you know, put these, snap them back on. What this chart also does is it tells you exactly how wide you need to cut a strip. Um, like for instance, this was the three quarter inch uh, finished tab that I made. It tells you you need to cut your fabric three inches wide. It does it for the real tiny one, which is five sixteenths, the hardware. I'm talking about the width of the strap and the hardware, <coughs> a half inch three quarter inch and one inch. It gives you the um, uh, width that you need to cut all of your fabrics. And for all of these, I do it exactly as I showed you before. Cut it the width it needs to be, fold it in half wrong sides together, press, fold each edge into the center, press, fold in half again, press. <laughs> so, excuse me, that's how I do all of my tabs and uh, straps. So the design is finished. <laughs> Mertis, there is a link um, for the, where did, where did it go? Darn, I can't believe, oh, here it is. <laughs> I just lost the uh, hardware chart. If you go to embroideryguard.com, look under free designs, it's there. Um, if you down, if you went to that first link that I gave you, it tells you where everything is. <laughs> it tells you where um, this is, where the design is, where the other designs are. Um, a link to, um, gosh, I'm trying to think of what else I put on there. There's quite a few things. A link to the events that I talked about earlier. Okay, so now the design just, let me grab it and get it out of the hoop. And I'll actually trim this and turn it to the right side for you. And then we're going to talk about the, the strap and the adjustable strap that I made for this. But first, let's do this. This down here is the opening. So I'm going to take my scissors. I'm just going to start trimming. I like to start at either end of the opening. That way, I know to leave this longer. The rest is going to be trimmed um, about a quarter inch all the way around. Although when I get to my zipper and my tab, here's the tab right here, the end of the tab. You can see that. I'm not going to cut those. Because if you cut those um, short, then when you have your strap on your bag and you're pulling on it or getting in and out of your wallet, 
you're taking the chance of pulling them out. So you leave them longer. I'm just removing that tape that I had on them to hold them in place. And let me get my scissors in here and I'm just going to start trimming the corners. I'm gonna all clip diagonally. And I'm gonna cut until I get up to that tab and I'm getting very close to it. So I'm gonna work around the tab. There's my tab. I don't wanna cut it. And I don't wanna cut the end of the zipper either because um, sometimes if you cut the end of that zipper, you know, the same thing can happen. It can start to pull away at the edge there. So it just kind of takes a little bit of maneuvering to get around the tab and the zipper. I'm just trying to hold those out of my way so I don't cut them. And then let me get over this way so that I don't cut my zipper end. I will cut the zipper end down a smidge. I mean, it doesn't need to stick out that far. But like I said, I don't want to cut it really short. So let me just get rid of all of this stuff here. There's my tab. There's my zipper end. You know, maybe I'll cut it down to half an inch. Looks like I got a little bit of bulk right here I can get rid of. All right, I can go all the way across the top. The top has a little bit of a curve to it. Flip that corner. And again, the same thing over here. I don't want to cut my tab. I don't want to cut my zipper. So I'm going to kind of be careful here. Work around both of those items. There's the tab. Um, let me get rid of this piece of fabric. And we'll cut that zipper tab down to about half of an inch. Get behind it. And let me, I can get this fabric here behind that tab out of there. Whoops, I did cut one of the tabs off a little bit. That'll be okay because I didn't cut it too badly. Flip this bottom corner. Flip over here to the, where the opening is. And let me just kind of trim down that opening a little bit. Let me get rid of all of this stuff here and we're gonna turn the wallet. Now, if you want to, you could always, um, you know, just kind of make little clips into this curved uh, top of the wallet. It helps to relax the fabric and, you know, makes that curve come out really nice. So then all we do is we reach inside. I can get rid of this bulk of this uh, stabilizer and, batting there because I don't need that. I do need the fabric, so I don't want to cut the fabric down here. All right, and I'm ready to reach inside and turn it. And I like to have my little handy turning tool. And again, this is the eight by 12 wallet. And don't forget to type hashtag garden. Uh, Shirley, can you sew all the way around and turn through the zipper? Not on this design. And you know, there are reasons why um, that you can't do it on this design. I'm kind of pushing out the corners here. The wallet's gonna close with a snap and we need to um, be able to get our snap in. I'm getting the top corners pushed out with my fingers a little bit. And then I'm going to use my tool because I want to get those top corners pushed out really nice. And you're going to want to get the curve of the top pushed out really nice. Let me get this other corner out. I want to get the bottom corners out. You got a little bit more bulk down here because you have, um, you got an additional pocket and I'll show you the inside here as soon as I get all this done. Okay, so that's good for now. So now I got a piece of tape from my tab sticking out. All right, I would of course give this a nice press and you're gonna turn in the um, 
bottom edges here. Now you don't close it up yet, okay? Do not close it up yet because we have, you know, snaps to put in to close our wallet up. And I'll just put a couple of clips right here, just for now, just so that we, um, I don't know where my other clip went, but this is uh, where the wallet would close down here. So to kind of go over what the wallet contains, you have a zippered pocket here that's fully lined. The pocket goes from the zipper down to this area here. That's as far as it goes. There are three credit card pockets on each side. They are divided by a stitched line. There are the tabs that we can add our strap to. This is a pocket down here. Um, you know, a phone can fit into it. Some phones, I'm not gonna say all phones, but some can. Um, I kind of have this loopy on the back of mine right now, but that loopy is gonna kind of make it where it doesn't fit really well. But um, one other thing, another tip on this design that I used to say a lot in the in-person classes where I taught this design, if you wanted to put a phone in this bottom pocket, you can skip the step that stitches this line here and this line here. So you would just tape the pocket in place, skip this step, and then you have more room for a longer phone. Um, the reason the lines are here, it will hold a checkbook. If you are still someone who uses a checkbook, the checkbook back can go inside here. Um, paper money fits in here. So that's why these lines are here, but they can be skipped if you um, wanted to. Okay, so I've got my um, D-rings on here to hold my strap. Let's go over first, let's just talk about the snap. This one has a magnetic snap on it. You can see that. And the other one that I did has a, just a camp snap, the plastic snap here. And then when it folds, here's the other snap for when it folds together. So what I wanna show you is the reason you don't stitch up the bottom yet, and the reason you can't go and turn it through the zipper is because of the snap. So on this one, I actually left this bottom piece open. Determine where you're gonna put your top snap. Find the center of the uh, top of the flap. Make sure that you install the snap with the cap on the outside of the wallet and the either male or female part on the inside of the wallet. When you install the bottom snap, you will fold your wallet how it's supposed to be folded determine, you know, by putting a little mark here or something with a air erasable pin where your snap needs to go because the snap actually needs to be um, installed from the inside of the wallet. Otherwise, if you put through everything, you're going to, this pocket then becomes useless. So that's why you leave it open until you get your snap installed. And then you can use, if you want to use fusible tape to close it, you could do that. Um, if you, uh, you know, hand sewing, there is a stitch called, um, what is it called? The ladder stitch. Very simple, easy hand stitch to do that is practically invisible. On the cork one that I did, I actually used a glue because I didn't want to stitch through that cork there at the bottom. So I used a glue to um, put that edge together. So we have this one, we have this one, and we have the one that I just hacked. Now, let's talk about the strap. I made an adjustable strap. And the snaps that you put in, and on my adjustable strap, let's look at this one because it was the actual finished one. When you make a strap, you know, you obviously have to, let me unhook this. You obviously have to attach hardware to it. So basically, you know, you put the hardware through the little bottom part of the swivel hook, fold your end over. And a lot of times people will sew a little box, um, put an X in it. To me, that's kind of hard. It's hard to do. Sometimes it doesn't look 
you know, nice and neat. It looks a little messy. So I prefer to use rivets. And the rivet will hold that down. It looks very nice. It looks very professional. Um, I use the rivets from Cam Snaps um, to do that. I use the snaps from Cam Snaps. I use their tool to install them. Judy from Cam Snaps has just um, come out with what she's calling the Embroidery Garden Bundle. So what it is, is, and I got my list here so I don't forget anything, what you get in this bundle, and these are all items that I have recommended to be used, you know, in my designs, snaps, grommets, rivets, um, key fob hardware, those kind of things. So you're going to get in this bundle the press, and that's the large, larger table press that she has, and the adapter base so that you can um, switch that out, two hole cutting dies, um, the hole cutting dies, what they do is like when you put a, a rivet through something that's kind of thick like this, the folded fabric, it has an actual die that will cut a hole smaller than, um, you know, like the rivet. So the prong will go in very nicely. So, you know, you don't have to use the awl or anything like that. Makes it really nice. Makes the, um, whatever you're installing, you can use it on the snaps, et cetera. Makes it really nice. Um and you can get a nice press on it. You're also gonna get 50 sets of eight millimeter and 50 sets of 10 millimeter um, double cap rivets, which is what I just showed you on that strap, which basically I use the eight or the 10 millimeters. Um, you're gonna get the dies for those. You're gonna get 50 sets of seven millimeter grommets. Um, you can use those on like things like uh, key chains, uh, snap tabs, those kind of things. Um, Let's see what else you're gonna get. 50 sets of size 20 snaps, which are the size of snaps I use on all my designs, and 50 sets of extra long um, snaps. So in case you're going through something very thick, sometimes people have problems going through like two layers of marine vinyl, so they wanna use the extra long uh, snaps, plus you're gonna get the dies for those. Everything that you do is gonna have a different die. You're gonna get 15 sets of magnetic snaps, and those are the ones that I showed you on the cork wallet, I used a magnetic snap. Let me kind of unsnap it there. See how those kind of look? There it is on the bottom side. So you're going to get 50 of those um, with those dies. You're going to get 10 sets of key fob hardware with the clamping um, dies that she has. And she's done all that together. Plus, you will get 15% off using the code M garden m garden so it's e m b g a r d e n 15 the number 15 and let's see if i can these are my notes but if you look down here at the bottom here's the code m garden for 15 percent off that bundle at campsnaps.com so i use all of her um, snaps, uh, rivets, is etc. Because I just think it makes a really nice, professional-looking finished um, way to add straps. Sometimes I like to put them like here on the tabs. I'd put one like right here on the tab because sometimes I don't want my hardware to move. But you know, this is a small area; doesn't really matter that much. Um, this is the just a little strap that I'm going to be using on the wallet that I just made and I don't have my rivets on yet I just kind of clamped them together so I know exactly where I need to put them so are there any questions on anything that I talked about today anything about how I hacked the design remember there is um, no change to, to the file you see that I kind of used the file itself to make placement lines when I added the tabs. And again, I could have, you know, gone back to that same area. And instead of taping my tabs down, I could have just let the machine stitch over it just a little bit is all it needs just to hold it in place so that you're sure that they, they don't move um, on you. So let's see, that is a great deal star for that um, Camp Snaps bundle. Um, you can go, Two camp snaps. Let me grab something right here. Um, 
Whoops. Okay, I got it right now. And let me put it into the chat. This is the link to the bundle. Okay, this is the link to the bundle. And um, remember, use the code here. Let me put the code in here too. And this is the code to get 15% off of that bundle. Judy is very good at um, answering any questions that you have and to ship things out very quickly. Another thing that you may not realize about Camp Snaps is um, a big chunk of their proceeds go towards helping and fostering homeless animals and you know just giving them a better life. Judy is a really sweet person. Uh, rivets do give a neater um, finish, I think. To me, I could never sew that little box with the X in it. It never looked neat to me. Rivets look very nice and very professional. Okay, so remember, be on the lookout for the hack for zipper bag. And remember, it can be any of the bags in the, in the hoop zipper bag set. This one happens to be the 8 by 8 if you were a little bit late coming in, the hack on this one is just um, like a double pocket here. Another idea, let's say that this pocket on the back of the wallet, here it is. Let's say you wanted it to be divided for whatever reason you wanted it to be divided. When I was machine sewing this pocket to this piece, the quilted piece, all I would have had to have done is just run a line down there and made it a double pocket if you wanted to. So, you know, that's an idea too. Um, and the other hack was the notebook cover. And, you know, I will go over how I did the page marker. Like I said, I did do this in some of the virtual classes I did on the notebook cover. But the hack on this one is the interior pocket here that, you know, you can drop some cash in, credit card, uh, you know, whatever you want, and you've got it with you. All right, so um, I am sorry about, you know, not going to Facebook. I don't know why it did that. You know, it's we're dealing with, you know, cyberspace. So there's always a glitch or something. Um, let's see, what else? Okay, everybody get your hashtag garden in. Remember, $20 gift card to a broader garden. I'm going to be picking it in just a minute. I'll let a few more people who, <clears throat> excuse me, maybe came in late and didn't um, own it. I'm sorry, didn't see it, um, can get it in. <laughs> okay, Diane is asking, if you already have the press on some of the dies, could you use the code to get what you don't have? Um, no, that code is only good on the bundle. If you are, let's say you don't want the bundle, but you are a first-time user or customer of Cam Snaps, you can use the code Embroidery Garden, all one word, for 10% off um, if you want to try some products. Um, you know, always give... Uh, uh, Judy, um, an email, should her an email about anything. Carrie, hi, nice to see you. Questions about metal zippers. No, no, no. You don't want to ever use metal zippers. The zipper that I'm showing here, let me give you a close up. You might think that's metal because look how it shines. It is not a metal zipper. This is a faux metal zipper. That's a nylon coil. Never, ever, ever use metal teeth zippers. Um, you can get, I get a lot of these zippers from Sally Tomato. Um, she has number threes now. She used to only carry number fives, but she, now she has number threes. Um, so, you know, I get a lot of these from Sally Tomato. Um, I've gone over before how you can use a number five in some of my designs, but never ever use a zipper with metal teeth in it. Um, that made me think of something else, but now I can't think of what I was going to tell you about that. Oh, if you want to order cork from Sally Tomato, and again, this wallet that I showed you earlier, this is cork. It's what they call light cork. So it's not really thick. It's more light. And on this one, I use cork on the outside, some cork on the inside. This is fabric. The credit card pockets are fabric. That's to cut down on some bulk. If you wanted to try it all in cork, um, the pattern does say that, you know, use folded pieces of fabric for these pockets. Don't fold them. They okay? just don't fold them and it would probably work. So you would only cut this like 
half the width that the instructions say to. But um, if you wanted to order cork from Sally Tomato, you can use the code REEN, R-E-E-N, and save, I think it's 10% off of your cork orders. And that's anytime at sallytomato.com. And don't forget about the um, Comet Sold event. I'm going to actually be up there at their warehouse in, uh, I believe it's Fox Lake, Wisconsin, on Thursday at noon. Okay, let's see. Uh, DV, yeah, I did the 8x12 wallet, but I have wallets um, for 5x7, 6x10, and 7x12 hoop. <clears throat> Excuse me, they're all just a little bit different due to the width of the hoop. So some of them have credit card pockets going vertically instead of horizontally. Some have um, a small pocket at the bottom, so, you know, near the top here. Um, it's just I had to change it up because of the width of the hoop. And let's see. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and we're going to pick the winner for the $20 gift card to embroiderygarden.com. And you guys are going to watch this live. Let me bring it up here. All right, we've got 78 people. This is your absolute last chance to type in hashtag garden to um, before I click the draw button. When I click the draw button, the names are going to just Anyone who typed hashtag garden, the names are going to start moving and it's going to randomly pick someone. So here we go. We need a drum roll. And it looks like the winner is Cynthia Nielsen. Nielsen. So Cynthia, I want you to um, send me either an email via my website, send me a message on Facebook, but uh, send me a message so that you can claim um, your gift card, $20 to Embroider Garden. I'll get you a lot of stuff. Uh, no, there is not a wallet, Murtis, for the 9.5 by 14 hoop. Um, not at this time, but that could, you know, be something in the future. I like that. Uh, where can you find information about using the number 5 zipper? Uh, I know I did a video at some point, um, but it's like inside of another video. It wasn't just on that. Basically, what you do very quickly is when the wallet stitches or any of my bag designs stitch, they're going to make two parallel lines that are the width of a number three zipper, which is about an inch. After it stitches those placement lines onto your stabilizer, take it off the uh, machine Lay it down on your cutting table. Use a ruler with an eighth inch mark. And I use an ink pen and measure out an eighth of an inch, you know, to the outside of the one of the lines. Draw a new line. Do the same thing at the um, opposite edge. Measure out an eighth of an inch. Draw another line. That's going to give you a new placement for um, it's like an inch and a quarter, which is what a number five zipper is. It's an inch and a quarter. All right, so I wanna thank you all for joining me. Remember to like and follow Embroidery Garden on Facebook. That way you can uh, get reminders about all those things coming up. You know, the comment sold, the fabric giveaway. Don't forget the beautiful fabric. This is one of them, one of the choices here. These two, um, the ones I used in the wallet, these were uh, from Embroider Shop. That giveaway is going to be, the winners are going to be announced on the 28th, which I believe is Tuesday. One from Embroider Guard's Facebook page, one from my In The Hoop Facebook group. So you got two chances. So um, be sure to just, all you do is have to comment on the post. Um, it asks you a question, comment, and two winners will be picked. All right. And yeah, everything else that's coming up, um, I'll be posting about that. I want to thank you for joining me today. Sorry that it did not go to Facebook, something I can't help, you know, Facebook and uh, whatever cyberspace decides to do what they want to do some days. So everyone have a great day. Again, thanks for joining me. I'll see you soon. Bye.